$15,000 fine for a radio station running commercials. That's crazy. Or is it? An LPFM radio station or low power FM radio station was fined $15,000 by the FCC recently. Well, why? Because basically they were running as a commercial station. Well, and a low power FM station is falls under the same rules as a non-commercial educational station. So, let's define some terms. Non-commercial educational station and a low power FM station uh, both abide by the same rules, but a non-commercial educational or non-com station, make it easier, is in the lower portion of the FM band. So if we look at the FM band as a timeline, if you will, on one side you have 88.1, on the other side you have 107.9. Now, this section here from 88.1 to 91.9 is called the reserved band, and it's reserved only for non-commercial stations. Non-commercial stations are there to operate in the public interest. Well, all stations are technically to be operating in the public interest, but these are very more specifically and for more community organizations. And so they have a few other special things that allow them, these stations are not allowed to run commercials. They're allowed to run what are called underwriting acknowledgements, where they acknowledge the people and companies who have supported the station. And you may hear these things, like if you listen to NPR, if you will, you know, this program brought to you by, or this station is supported by, sponsored by, you know, Bob's Ford dealership um, and listeners like you, something to that effect. It's very vanilla. It's very plain. It's very just matter of fact of who the sponsor is and the fact that they support the station. And there's what are called enhanced underwriting acknowledgements. And, you know, you can be a little bit more showy about it, but the point is, it's not supposed to be a commercial. Now, the other small detail with LPFMs is that LPFMs can be anywhere on the whole FM band. Um, the FM band, again, from 88.1 to 107.9, and the LPFMs were created to help give small community organizations a voice and an opportunity to, to reach out to the community. Regardless of your opinions on it. Some people in the broadcast don't like it. Anyways, regardless of the opinions, they're there, and the rules that they need to abide by are the same as the non-commercial FM stations. Non-commercial stations and LPFMs enjoy less regulations and reduced fees, but the catch is they can't run commercials. So that's kind of the trade-off for them. No commercials, but we don't have to abide by as many regulations that sometimes can be pretty tough to keep up with. So what constitutes a commercial? I mean, that kind of really is, well, what's the difference between acknowledging a sponsor and a commercial? Well, the FCC defines what a commercial basically is in, in basically terms that are prohibited for a non-commercial station to do. So the first thing is you cannot do qualitative or comparative statements. You can't say we have the best or the fastest or the quietest or the slowest or anything that provides a quality over something else or provides a comparison uh, against another organization or company. Two, you can't do price information, including sales, including discounts, none of that. It's, you can't have price information in there. No calls to action. You can't say, call us now, 1-800-BUY-STUFF. Or you can't say, uh, visit our website. You can't say, come on down to our car dealership or to our restaurant. You cannot entice people to take an action of any kind. You can't have any inducements to buy, sell, rent, or lease. So to otherwise 
kind of entice people to buy your services or rent your rental equipment or lease an apartment or whatever. Can't do it. And the last thing, which I was kind of surprised by a little bit, but not really, but the last thing was excessively detailed menu listings. And I was like, excessively detailed menu listings? So then I was looking, I was reading this FCC order, and they provided some of the examples in the back uh, in an appendix. It was showing, it was this restaurant that was listing out some of its menu items, you know, burgers, burgers and fries, hot dogs, whatever the food items were, but it was listing them out. And so excessively detailed menu listings was like that as well. So that is another one. Now, there's no, the last thing is, is that there's no time limits on announcements, underwriting acknowledgements. You could have a two minute long underwriting acknowledgement, but uh, there's a there's there's a huge but there. The issue is that in the FCC's experience, the longer a underwriting acknowledgement or an announcement goes, the more likely that the station will venture into these prohibited topics, such as qualitative or comparative statements, prices, calls to action, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, the shorter generally the better, the less likely that you're going to find yourself in um, prohibited territory, if you will. Finally, the, the FCC expects you to act in good faith. I mean, they expect you to follow the rules, operate honestly, and so knowing what the rules are, abiding by them. It, you know, it would be very helpful. So back to that LPFM that I said was fined $15,000. What were they fined for? Well, basically operating like a commercial radio station. They were caught making 1,600 announcements that violated the rules. Uh, some things were qualitative and comparative statements, calls to action, um, price mentions, and some of them, I think six specifically, were excessively detailed menu listings. So, there you go. If you're ever going to get into community radio, and it's a non-commercial or LPFM, this is going to be the biggest pitfall that you will probably run into. Because you need to support your station, and you need to find ways to pay the bills. Pay your people, pay the rent, pay the electricity, pay the site lease for, you know, your antenna. It costs money, and you need to be able to find a way to pay that. But at the same time, you can't do it the way that the big boys do it, the, the full-blown commercial stations. So you kind of have to get a little creative. Now, where there's no regulation is in your station's internet stream or podcasting, or website. As long as it's not over the air, sky's the limit. You can do calls to action. You can do qualitative comparative statements. You can mention price. You can mention all of that. All of it is on the table. But as long as that does not go out over your air, that's where you'll get in trouble. Anyways, that was kind of the short topic for today. Hopefully, 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 hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have a transmitter trip coming up. And um, yeah, right now I am finishing up the last bits of the voiceover IP project that's happening here at the church. Um, somehow I became in charge of that installation. So um, that's going to be another topic and video and you know, thing that we can discuss. Uh, but that will end August 6th. Uh, at that point, then I hand it off to a different department to deal with support and the day-to-day -day administration of it. So in between all my little different uh, voiceover IP things, I'm here in my storage area in our office, and I've recently reconfigured a lot of it, moved some things into another room, uh, took down some shelving units, got rid of a lot of stuff that just 
was trash. It literally was trash. And we've been storing it for so many years. But that's another story for another time. So with this video, thank you for watching. I hope it was kind of informative, kind of peeling back a little bit of the business side of and the regulatory side of, of broadcasting. And so uh, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them uh, the best I can. And um, finally, I do have to say this statement. I am not a communications attorney. My advice is just advice that I have come to understand from reading the FCC, from talking to our communications attorneys. So don't stand on me as a defense for any FCC rules you may violate, please. I am not a communications attorney. I have not played a communications attorney on TV but I did stay at a Motel 6 once. But that doesn't qualify me. So you hear what I have to say. If you're in broadcasting and you have more questions, talk to your communications attorney because FCC regulations are, they can be tricky. But there are certain common sense things like these rules about underwriting acknowledgements that we can abide by and pretty much generally stay on the good side of the FCC. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, comments down below, I'll get to them really, really quickly, but I'll get to them. Um, if you like it, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. And if you want to see more of these videos, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy.